TNT Hoops. <laughs> What's going on ladies and gentlemen YouTube watchers and Memphis um, Another special interview uh, Got a special guest in the building Very familiar with him myself We got my guy Alan A.K.A. some of you guys know him as A1 yeah. And uh, before we get into this interview I would like to say Um this guy, he's been training in my gym, and uh, I just love the atmosphere that he's been producing. He actually motivated me to get back up and started back working with the kids more on a more personal avenue other than just recording. Yeah. So, um, very positive guy. So, just kind of tell the people a little bit of your background, history, yeah. uh, your love for the game, and how you got started. So, um, Memphis native. Um, I grew up I grew up playing at Overton High School. I did well I played at Wooddale High School, ninth and tenth grade, then I went transferred over to Overton. Um me and my boy Sir you know Sergio. Yeah. Sergio Carouge, man, uh we was like two of the leading scorers at Overton. And um man, I love the game, bro. Love the game. What went to was that? that was two thousand seven. Yeah, two thousand seven, that's when we graduated. Okay. Yeah, so we graduated in 2007. Uh, we was inducted into the uh, to the Memphis Top 20 uh, game. We actually played in that game before the USA versus the World game when they had it here in Memphis. Uh, Kevin Love, I think Kevin Love and Derrick Rose and some more guys was in that joint. But we played in the game before that. So it was like Top, t top 20 in Memphis. Uh, I know you're familiar with AJ, AJ Thomas. Okay. Uh, Mo Miller was in it. Um, Randy Culpepper, like a whole bunch of good names, man. And um, and yeah, so that's the background on basketball. I went to Bethel University. It's in McKenzie, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, played there my last two years of college. Uh, graduated from there, and I averaged like 15, 16 points a game. Um, and then, man, I tried to, you know, get myself together so I can go overseas. I was working out heavy, uh, working out with Scotty Mason, working out with Tony Harris uh, back in the day. And, man, uh, after that, it was like, it was a turning point in my life that kind of like shut basketball down for a minute. And um, it was when I had lost my best friend, Sylvester Silk. We was like teammates at Bethel University. Man, he passed away playing basketball, like cardiac arrest, just mm. passed out. And um, from that point forward, it was like, because we was like best friends since, man, first, second grade. So um, became roommates. And then after that, it was like, bro, I just, I, I completely shut down. I shut everybody off. I shut everything down. And then I messed around and moved to Arizona. So it was when I moved to Arizona when I heard the news. And uh, I got a phone call. They said he had passed out, you know, and then he didn't make it. So I was like, reevaluate my life, you know, from there. And it was kind of like, dog, so, so what am I going to do next? You know what I'm saying? Because he was always asking me, what are we going to do after basketball? You know, and then, you know, like a basketball head, they're going to be like, man, we're going to play. We're going to play ball forever. We're going to forever. You know, but. I was like, man, I said, oh, oh, no, dog. I said, I ain't thinking that far. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm just going to hoop. And let the hoop, you know, do what it do. But he was like, dog, we got to have something that we're going to do afterwards. Something that's meaningful. You know what I'm saying? Then that, from there, you know, I was like just relaxing, chilling, just trying to, you know, kick back and just put everything to the side. And then I thought about it. I was like, man, maybe I need to start training people. You know what I'm saying? Start yeah. training kids instead of, you know, being so selfish and you know trying to get it for myself you know like no shade to anybody out there that's hooping you know what i'm saying y'all y'all trying to get overseas do what you got to do you know what i'm saying but it was just a life turning point for me you know and that just that changed everything around and then you know that mess around and birthed a1 hoops elite okay so, yeah. uh well, let me ask you uh, another question uh kind of i mean it may have just been your style um mm -hmm. 
before that happened to your best friend. I hate to hear that. Yeah. Um, I know your training is kind of like um, it's a different type of atmosphere mm -hmm. than to the trainings that we do see. I'm not yeah. saying it's uh, it's not ch a churchy vibe, but you're kind of like it's kind of like not explicit no cussing or nothing oh, around yeah. the kids so i mean it's just yeah. a different atmosphere but it's very effective because you're not mm -hmm. no you know not like a guy that's just trying to help kids in the church but you are really right. a hooper but yeah. you're raising them in a different way in the atmosphere so where did it come from man so that came from so i i was raised i was raised in the church my dad's uh he's a preacher so i'm a pk past this kid and um it's always like a bad rap about pastors' kids and all that. They always say they're bad and all that stuff. But, I mean, I, I strayed off a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I'm back on the straight and narrow. And it's just, you know, the relationship that I got with God, you know, I want to do everything to please him. You know what I'm saying? So if that means I got to speak to the kids in a certain way that pleases him, then that's what I'm going to do. You know, so ever since then, every time that I get out on the court, I mean, my niece comes out and work out with me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm not going to talk to my niece crazy. So I'm not going to talk to no other kid crazy. You know what I'm saying? I don't care mm -hmm. if it's an adult. I don't care if it's a pro to come work out with me. I don't care if it's college all the way down to elementary. I'm not, you know, that's that's just my style. You know, everybody got their certain style. That's, that's my niche. You know what I'm saying? I just make sure that I encourage, make sure that I, you know, push them. I mean, I know how to. I know how to talk to them to get them to do what they need to do. You know what I'm saying? Pull the dog yeah. out of them. But it don't involve anything explicit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's the atmosphere that I set. The parents like it. Um, the guys that's in college, you know what I'm saying, to come and train with me, they like it. You know, I got a couple guys that want to go pro. You know, I don't got to curse at them. You know, I just tell them, look, <laughs> you ain't going to make no money. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't out here putting it in, you know, so you got you to gotta put the work in. So, I mean, I tell them like that and they get it, you know. Have you ever um, bump heads? Because, I mean, you know, sometimes you ever had parents that come in and they, be, they automatically tell you, hey, get on his tail. You know what I'm saying? I know you the not have it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you don't, in a sense, they kind of, you know how parents would be right. like, step in if they child not doing something right. Yeah. So, uh, how, how have you dealt with those situations? Do you kind of give them a heads up of what, what you deliver before um, they, they pay for it or get into the program? Well, I mean, they can, they can see, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, my fruit, you're going to see the fruit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a lot of different scriptures in the Bible that talk about your fruit and, you know, being presentable and all of that stuff. And they see the fruit of A1 hoops. Like, it's not, I ain't, I ain't out here, you know, all up in your kid face or nothing like that. I may pull them to the side and be like, look, all right, we got to get it together. You know, like, you want to get playing time. If you want to get off the bench, stop riding the bench so much. Like, look, you're going to you're gonna have to get with it. You know, and then I tell the parents that I'm like, look, y'all kids in good hands. You know, I don't got to I don't got to talk to them the way that y'all do. But it's always I think kids, for some reason, they always hear something better from somebody else other than their parents. You know, yeah. and it's like plenty of times where the parents are like, yo, I tried to tell him that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't listening. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, it's just always like that. I mean, I was like that as a kid, you know, with my trainers. My dad would tell me, look, you need to get up a thousand jump shots every day. You know, like you got to work on your shot. You got to be consistent. And I was like, yeah, all right, all right. But when my trainer told me, it was like, it was gold. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah Pops, man, he told me I need to get up a thousand jump shots. And my dad was like, bro, I've been telling you that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, <laughs> the past three, four years, you know. But, I mean, it's just the way that you communicate with them. You know, I, I just try to, I try to put everything out on the table, you know, and let the parents know, like, this is how I run my stuff. You know, I mean, if you want to chime in and tell your kid you need, they need to pick it up or something like that, that's fine. You know, but I don't want no kid, no parent out there, you know, standing beside me trying to run my yeah. practice and all that. Like, I ain't, I ain't letting that happen. But, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and I guess a, a, a thing you didn't bring up, and, and people I always tell, well, a couple of people that know uh, that you be in my gym. And they uh -huh. be like, hey, that's, that's your boy. That's your boy. I seen him on TV. So... So yeah. how how did that happen with you working with the uh, the Grizzlies? Was it the Grizzlies Center or the, the it's the uh, Memphis Grizzlies youth basketball program? So that all happened because 
it ties back in with right after I lost my best friend. It okay. was like um, I was just I was basically looking for different jobs and different you know things where I can implement my skills and implement my craft with uh, basketball. So. I was looking around in Phoenix and I was trying to find some stuff and like it was at the time when me and my wife um, when we got married we moved we had moved out to Arizona we was out there for like three or four years and then we was thinking to come back because we was like when we had kids you know we want to make sure our kids are close to home with our parents and all of that so I was like all right let me look for some different jobs and I was looking at uh, the Memphis Grizzlies youth basketball they got a program and they needed some coaches and I was like alright cool so I'm gonna do that and I had just applied well I ain't really applied I emailed the coordinator okay. and uh, he was like man we've been looking for you know some some guys that have, that have played college basketball that got you know the expertise of you know all of the skills that we need to have set for the kids so I emailed him and he just told me to come in for an interview and went in for an interview next thing you know I was on with them, you know, and I've been I've been rocking with them ever since. I mean, it's like a part it's a part time thing, kind of like seasonal part time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it works for me. You know, we do a lot of clinics and we do a lot of camps, but we haven't been doing that because of COVID. So everything been kind of shut down. We probably do like a camp here or a clinic there, um, small setting. But that helped me out, you know, being under being under his tutelage and him, you know, coaching me. He was like, look. This is gonna help out A one hoops because he know about A one hoops. You know, okay. he was like, "This is gonna help out A one hoops. This is gonna help push your brand and help grow your brand." You know, he said, "Just take everything, everything that I tell you, everything that you see, everything that you don't see that you want to implement. Do that." You know, so he's all for my program. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm still partner with them, so it's working good. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, before I get into a business question, let's, mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody has a transition. Either you go from coach to training or mm -hmm. you go from training to coaching. Right. So what what are your aspects? I mean, I'm pretty sure if you're doing pretty good with the kids, you didn't have people that you train their kids ask you, why don't you coach? Man. Is that, a, is that something you're willing to step into or you stray away from? Um... I feel like um, ever since ever since the incident, you know, I I knew that I was supposed to be helping out kids. I knew that I was supposed to be mentoring kids. I just didn't know in at what capacity, you know. So um, so right when right when I finally got it in my head, I was like, okay, how can I reach the kids? You know, still have one on one relationships with them, you know, still build them up, still encourage them, and all of that. And I was like, that's through basketball. So let me do basketball training, you know. So I started doing basketball training when I was in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little stint of coaching. I, I coached at the Boys and Girls Club in in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and it was pretty cool. I mean, I was coaching some like five and six year olds. They was just running wild, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I don't think I want to coach this age. I was like, I'm gonna let that be for somebody else. And then I got the opportunity to coach. Um, coach at Desert Shadows, it's in Scottsdale, like a super rich area out in uh, Arizona. Okay. I coached seven graders and we went undefeated. Like we went undefeated. I think we was like 12 and 0 and uh, we won a championship there and everything. And I mean, it was, it was fun, but I was like, I like this, but I still want to develop the player. You know, like yeah. I've always been big on developing the player and um, all of the aspects of their game instead of just trying to coach everybody collectively and then try to worry about one or two what like I can't I don't want to show no favoritism or nothing like that because I had a couple I had a couple hoopers dog like I had like um I had two I had two like small guards one was one was probably like five eight and then the other one was probably like five four and he played like Steve Nash so I had those two Try not to show them too much that much favoritism, but in practice, I was like pulling them to the side, like, "Look, you need to be able to do this, blah blah blah," <laughs> you know. So I was like, "Okay, this is the this is the line of work I need to be doing. I need to be doing basketball training." Moved back to Memphis, and I also picked up a job with with Dale Middle. Okay. Um, I was coaching them for one season. Um, man, I think 
I think we had got to we got to the state no we got to the we got to the district finals. It was the first time in I think 15 10 to 15 years that they got to the district finals. Okay. So once I coached them, I mean, got them to the district finals. We lost to um man, I can't think of the school. I think we communicated when you coached in that middle school year. Yeah, it was a it was a middle school team out in Southwind area. I can't think of who they is. Um, but we lost against them, and uh, ever since then, I was like, all right, should I go back? Should I go back and coach another year, or should I just focus on, you know, basketball training? Because when I didn't focus on basketball training, I was focused on the kids. It was like my training was, like, going slacking. down, and it was slacking. Yeah, because I, I had to be there at practice with them guys. I had to be there for the games and all of that, and I was like, man, I'm just – I'm just gonna take a break from coaching, you know. And then right after that, you know, I had uh, my wife gave birth to our first son, and um, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do the basketball training, you know, because I'm able to be at home with her a lot. Yeah. And then it was just, it was working out for me, you know, working out for my family. So, you know, I train in the evening time, and I'm there with my son throughout the day. So, you know, that was working, and I was like, I'm just gonna stick with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, did uh, having, I mean, I know you was, you still say it was a calling of you connecting with those kids. With you having your, well, this your first son, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, with you having your first son, did that uh, motivate you to maybe, like, get a lot better with your craft? Or, you know, or did he pull you in and make you want to stay at the house more? <laughs> Man, he, it, it made me, um, it made me want to keep going a little bit harder it was like i felt like it was another level that i can make it to um of course i was doing it i was training guys and training young ladies as well um just to get them better but now it's like okay how can i not only get them better but you know get them mentioned in memphis you know like i want i want the because i like to train underdogs you know mm -hmm. i like to train I like to train the ones that's been looked over, you know, I, I mean, no shade to anybody that's a star in Memphis, like, do your thing, but I like the underdogs, you know, because they got something to prove, they got a chip on their shoulder, so I think that me wanting to train them and make them so much better makes me go harder in the program, and in turn, it goes full circle, because when I'm going hard in my program, I'm going harder for my son, okay. you know, I'm going hard for my wife, and, um, and the more that the more that my program grows, you know, like that's 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 gonna be all love because as soon as my son get old enough, he gonna jump in the program. Yeah. You know, and he gonna be getting trained and, you know, it's gonna be smooth sailing from there. <laughs> so, uh with plans on getting the program bigger and I think a lot of times with especially when you're dealing with stuff like training, it's kinda more complicated than like other businesses. Uh sooner or later you're gonna need some help. Of course. Yeah. Uh, have you been looking for help or have you been prepping prepping somebody to get ready or are you just gonna whenever it's time you're gonna just try it I think um, I actually I got a couple guys in mind um, that I used to hoop with you know from, from time to time they had their hooping career I had mine and we still close friends um, when the time comes you know as it continues to grow because it get it get a little it get a little tough, you know, running from one end. I got some small kids down here, and then I go to the other end. I got my big kids. Yeah, you know, it get a little hectic because I'm going back and forth, and I want to be intentional about you know who I'm training that day. But um, yeah, when the time comes, I'm gonna have somebody prepped up and ready. I I see it maybe happening next year, uh, 2022 when I have me some help on the side and they'll be in there helping me out. And if I'm not able to make it, they can run the practice. They can run the training program, you know? So yeah, it's, it's in the works. It's in the works. Okay. So are your, uh, hoop dreams still cut off? You know, <laughs> I mean, cause I mean, you still fairly young and yeah. the people that you mentioned, they're still hooping overseas. Facts, and, facts. And then we still got leagues that they participate in that uh -huh. you haven't been in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I was I was talking to I was talking to my mentee about it, uh, my mentee Donovan, and um, and one of my good friends Justin that I train. 
um, they was like, man, we got to get we got to get you in the league, dog, because you be out here playing. Because I, I play occasionally. I get out there and do like some one on one with them, or if we play three on three, I get out there and jump in with them. But um, I mean, the thing is, right now, I got to get myself like all the way back in shape, like in basketball shape. That's my goal. Like I've been running every week. You know what I'm saying? Running with my son. Uh, getting a lot of exercise in and then when I come in the gym of course I'm getting up shots like the shot's still there so um, so when the time comes I I'm gonna I'm put it off to maybe next year or something like I, I'll probably be hitting some people up trying to get in somebody league so <laughs> just keep myself active <laughs> okay yeah well yeah, hey one I appreciate you for uh, stopping by oh yeah for sure and, for sure and, and kind of uh, Letting it. Matter of fact, do you have anything you want to say, like some upcoming clinics or some some merch or, or how people can contact you if they need your services if they don't want mine? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so man, y'all can y'all can contact me. I'm on I'm on Instagram and Facebook at a one hoops elite. Um, I also I just dropped some merch. It's out for pre order right now. So um, so I'll probably give you the link so you can put it in the uh youtube in the youtube description or whatever yeah. i got some nice merch that's coming out uh i got some basketball clinics that are coming up i got one next saturday on august the 21st is for ages five to ten and then next month i'm gonna do two more clinics i'm gonna do five to ten and then i think i'm gonna go ahead and boost it up and do 11 to like 14. um so i'm gonna do two clinics next month too Okay. So yeah. Do you have a do you have a website? So the website is uh I think it's a one hoops elite dot is some I'm gonna yeah, have to I send it around. to you. Man, <laughs> I'm gonna send it to you, you can put it in the description, but uh but yeah, it's it's something like that. But I got the shirts on there and I got a lot of information on training programs and all of that stuff too. So yeah. Okay, and then also I have a website too, which is TNT Hoops Basketball dot com. Yeah, I go visit that man. Go check that out. It's still in construction in a sense, but now uh -huh. since I got my guy, he uh he be in my gym training. So mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a news page, and then also if you can't remember his website, and you check my website, you'll be able to see his clinics and a direct link to his website. That's dope. On my website. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. The plug. So the plug. Uh, appreciate everybody liking, subscribe. And please okay. don't sleep on these interviews. I know sooner or later I'll blow up and everybody gonna watch them. Hey, it's gonna it's gonna get big. It's gonna get big. I've been I've been checking out all of them lately, dog. I went through and looked at everything that you done posted, bro. Like, and I commend you on what you're doing. Like, this is this is major. This major for the city. You know what I'm saying? This major for the basketball community and the basketball culture in Memphis. So, it's big time, bro. I appreciate I'm proud it. Proud of you. Appreciate it. Oh yeah, bro.